again folks and welcome back to this week's video. So it's the start of a new year and it's always good to have a look at how we are building our collection. So this week I've got a few tips to help you boost your game collection in 2022. So these are just ways you can add games, save money or just kind of beat future prices. So without further ado, let's jump into this week's video, game collecting tips for 2022. Before we go into this week's video, can I please ask you to hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoy it. It really helps the channel and there's only a very small percentage of people who subscribe. I do put videos out every single Saturday, so it'd be great to see you here every week. If you're like me and go around a lot of charity shops and kind of boot sales, you're going to be seeing a lot of Guitar Hero stuff. Especially at the moment, a lot of Guitar Hero live stuff. So I picked this one up from a local charity shop for just six pounds. So this is also the PlayStation 3 version. A lot of people will donate these guitars to charity shops because obviously they take up a lot of space. But there's a few things to be careful of when you pick these up. Firstly, you want to make sure you have the strap on the guitar. All the buttons seem in good condition. But the main thing, if you're picking it up, especially for the PlayStation 3, is make sure you have this tiny adapter. The game will not work without this adapter. So as well, we have got the game here for the PlayStation 3. Normally, the rule of thumb with these Guitar Hero games or the Rock Band games, the PlayStation 3 ones are rarer. It's just how the controllers work. You have to have the tiny bit of plugs in the console to be able to use it. So these will trade in at the moment to CX for about £10. I managed to pick this one up for £6. So even if you trade it in instantly, you're making £4 in trading credit. But I think these are the kind of items to sit on at the moment as the price of these and they get rarer is only going to go through the roof. So our next gaming tip for 2022 is the importance of Microsoft Rewards. Obviously this only works if you play on the Xbox. So it's kind of a reward system where you can earn points every day from doing just kind of small little tasks. So there is like bigger rewards like the Rewards Weekly set where you have to complete three activities. But literally two of these are just opening the app. One of them which is just is looking at one game. But it's time times the annoying ones such as searching on Bing, the worst internet browser of all time. And there's complete 50 searches. You can literally just search for gobbledygook. So these points do build up very slowly. But one thing that is really important is trying to get an achievement every day as then that gives you 50 points. There's normally a vast selection of stuff like buying stuff in game. You get kind of smaller ones like just YouTube links or even just linking onto a game. So just clicking this link will just give us five points. You literally just open the link, come straight back out. The app sometimes can be a little bit slow. It'll load back in and you've got your five points. It might seem small just adding five points every time, but these do add up slowly over time, especially if you bring in the rewards get from surveys. The Microsoft Rewards surveys are the quickest way to really boost your points. Done on a mobile, especially if you build up a couple of days streak, as you can see I've done here, as well as completing the quest and punch cards. So these points do build up pretty quick over time, but you do need a lot of points to get a voucher. So you can use these vouchers on digital content. A lot of people I know use them to pay for their games pass. My favourite way though is to build up vouchers to spend on Curry's PC World. So the Curry's voucher costs about... 37,500 points for a £25 voucher. So that does seem like quite a lot, but it's something that only takes a few minutes per day. The most recent game I picked up from that voucher was Disco Elysium, the final cut on the Xbox 360. One thing I will say about Curry's PC World, they do not have the greatest selection of games. So when it comes to a game that's a little bit more random like this one, rather than kind of your bigger titles, it is worth getting it when you see it. They also do have quite competitive prices and will price match a lot of websites as I have mentioned before. But essentially from doing a few surveys, from turning in a few achievements daily, I have got this game for free. Just paying a couple of minutes of my time per day. So I think that you can all agree that's probably worth a little bit of work. My next game and pickup tip for 2022 is all about Amazon Prime and their flash deals. So if you have Amazon Prime, obviously you don't have to pay extra for shipping, so that makes these even better deals. But they go super, super quick. One way I recommend keeping on top of these is using Hot UK Deals, as you'll get an alert every time a game is on offer. But you can get some really, really cheap PlayStation 4, Xbox One and even Switch games. So these do kind of vary in quality, but the price was fantastic. First up, we have Rocket Arena. I know it may be a dead game, but you know, I'm all about that physical. This one was just three pounds delivered. The next up, we have an absolute behemoth, Call of Duty Modern Warfare for the Xbox One, 
delivered for five pounds brand new. I'm actually open this one as I have been playing it. Next up we have Metal Gear Survive. Again, maybe they're not the most popular game ever created, but this was just three pounds delivered from Amazon Prime. And if you're collecting physical games, that is a damn good deal. And finally, we have Gears Tactics, which was, again, £5. So I know this may be on Games Pass, but you know I'm all about those physical games. So, a couple of things to consider with these. These sell out very, very quickly. They will sell out in about 5 to 10 minutes. But sometimes you can back order the games. So a couple of these took weeks to come and i mean weeks they were on back order this copy of call of duty i was waiting for for nearly two months through amazon prime so if you're in a rush these deals probably are not for you but to pick up all these games for just over a tenner is an incredible deal especially a good way to build up your collection in 2022 we all want to add games into our collection and one way we can do this is through reselling so regardless of what you think of it in principle, it's something you can do to kind of get a bit more money into your game fund. It's especially good if you know what you're looking for when you're going around charity shops. So this is one of the games that I always use an example of a game to pick up whenever you see it in a charity shop. It is Minecraft for the Xbox 360. This copy was £2. You can take this into CX and get £9 trading credit any day of the week or probably stick up on eBay for about £15. You're going to be seeing a lot of kind of Wii Sports, Mario games, stuff like that in charity shops. And even if you already have these in the collection, they're worth picking up to flip to get a little bit more money to put into games. You really do want to add to the collection. My next tip is all about the GameCube. Recently, there's been a lot of high profile YouTube people such as Phoenix Resale and Retro Rick talking about the GameCube. It is one where the prices have slowly gone up over the years, but I think we are going to see a real spike this year. So if you see the games cheap, pick them up now. As I did as I recently went into my local CX, they have some pretty good prices normally on the lower kind of GameCube tiles. So I managed to pick up this WrestleMania game, which I never played and I didn't have a GameCube back in the day when this one came out. And as you should all know by now, I am aiming for that complete WWE and WWF game collection. So it's always good to add one in. And then I also picked up The Sims Busting Out because it is just £3. It might not be the most expensive or the most exciting GameCube game, but I just think they're all going to get way more expensive. And I also, while we're talking about Nintendo consoles, I think the Wii U is going to go the same way. Over the next few years, people are going to realise they missed out on the Wii U and those games are going to be very, very much in demand. So the two consoles I recommend looking out for this year are Wii U and GameCube games. And yes, before anyone says it in the comments below, I do realise the irony of telling even more people to pick up GameCube and Wii U games. This next tip might be a little bit niche, but please stick with me. It's all about limited run games and how their pre-order system works. So if you see a game that you have even a passing interest in on Limited Run's website, I highly recommend you buy it during the pre-order phase. So these pre-orders normally are an open pre-order for two to four weeks, where they will press as many copies of the game that are as ordered. But when it gets past this point, you are going to fall victim to the scalpers and the resellers. So if there is a game you want, it is probably going to be doubled in price once that pre-order window is open. So make sure if there's a game you even have a passing interest in, you pick it up during that open pre-order phase, or you'll regret it down the line. One game I did miss out on was Race the Sun. I've really been getting into collecting for PlayStation VR recently, but I got very, very lucky picking this one up on eBay just as the bidding ended at a weird time of day. I'm very lucky as well that this is sealed, but obviously now I have to chase the card down. If you collect for limited run, you'll know you want to get that trading card with the game. But this is more the exception to the rule. I picked this one up cheap, but with a lot of limited run games, you won't get as lucky. For a lot of game collectors, it seems like emulation is a bit of a dirty word, but I do think it has a very important place in the community, especially if you want to play some incredibly rare and incredibly expensive games without forking out hundreds and hundreds of pounds for the right to do so. So, you know, I am a massive collector, but there is some games where I will draw the lines. I don't think there are many games that are worth paying hundreds and hundreds of pounds for. 
There are of course many ways to emulate your games. You can go the Raspberry Pi route, you can go the PC route, or you can just kind of get some of these compilation discs of older games that are on the newer consoles. But for me, I like to play the games how they're intended on the original hardware. So one of the ways I like to do this is using EverDrives. This is the latest EverDrive I picked up quite recently. It is the Super Drive for the Mega Drive. Now, I picked it up off Etsy for just 60 quid, and this has every single Master System game, every single Mega Drive game, and even Mega CD games. So if you have a Mega CD, you can play ROMs of all of those games. I think value for money wise, this is a fantastic way to be able to play tons and tons of Sega games. Imagine if you went out and put all those games, it would cost you thousands of pounds. So I think sometimes emulation, even though it might sound a bit of a dirty word, is the best way to save yourself a lot of money and a lot of hassle. We've come to the final tip of the video and I think this is possibly the most important tip of them all and that is to go against the grain. Everyone is always looking for N64 games, NES games, SNES games, all the stuff people are always looking for. So that means if they're looking for that, they're not looking for other stuff. For example, I pick up Master System games super cheap all the time. These may not be the most exciting titles, but if we're building a game collection, I managed to pick each of these up for just 99p on eBay. I think a lot of people sleep on the Mars system, even to some extent the Mega Drive. But you know, they're good retro games, especially when it comes to the NES and the SNES and the Mars system and the Mega Drive. A lot of games were released over both consoles. So sometimes, kind of going away from Nintendo, more onto Sega, you can save yourself a lot of money. Also, another thing I'd advise is looking towards your Xbox and Xbox 360 and to more extent PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3 games. At the moment, the market is absolutely flooded with these, but in tens of twenties of years time, they are gonna be the games people are after. Essentially, with the retro market, people are looking for the games from their childhood. So people who grew up with the Xbox 360, even the Xbox One or the PlayStation 3, those are the games they're gonna be looking for in 20 years time. So buy them now before the market goes crazy. There we have it then folks, that's our list. Just a few tips to help you game collecting in 2022. If you found this video useful, please remember to leave a like and subscribe as I do new videos every single Saturday. Thanks again for watching, I really appreciate it and I will see you next Saturday for another video. So until then, keep playing the game, see you soon.